Sounds good. Brian, how you doing? Yeah, yeah all good, man. All good. It's uh, mild out today, so we uh, not uh, dealing with the extreme cold weather. So I'll take that. What is what is mild in uh, New York today? <laughs> Low 30s. I mean, come on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, that's why I went to Costa Rica, baby. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it's 39 here in New Jersey, so we have a tropical paradise. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> I see people uh, starting to come in now, so we will yeah. um, give them a few minutes and then uh, get started once we fill the room here. Sounds good. Where are you, Andy? You're out of? New Jersey, southern yeah, New okay. Jersey. So. Okay. Not northern. So, you're right Smith, there with we us. have you on board i believe you're out of where are you today smith massachusetts yeah i'm i'm here yeah. very good just another 30 seconds or so guys yeah currently we have about 24 attendees in the queue Brian, you're in Hop Hog? Yeah, Hop Hog, uh, Long Island, yeah. My, uh, my aunt and uncle have lived out there for years and years. So Yeah, right now, it's back in the middle of uh, Long Island, so it's centrally located in, uh, um, you know, between, between uh, Nassau and Suffolk and, and about, you know, 45 minutes or so to uh, Manhattan or three hours, depending on the time of day, so. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> <laughs> I've been on the LIE many, many yeah. times. <laughs> I think we're okay now. Um, it looks like we're still locked in at 24 there. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Just wanted to uh, take a moment and uh, thank you all for, for joining us today. I know we all can have a lot on our plates and um, trying to carve out some time can be challenging. So I um, want to you know, not hold you too long today. And uh, again, we appreciate and value all your time. Um, my name is Brian Bracci. I'm with BNL PC Solutions. We're located in Hop Hog, New York. We are a managed service provider or an MSP, and we provide um, IT services and support for dozens of small businesses across Long Island and uh, New York City. We've been in business for over 25 years, and I think one of the keys to our longevity and success is that we are always evaluating technology, uh, the technology landscape and keeping up with the change, latest changes and trends and incorporating that into our clients' environments and making sure that uh, we kind of have the latest to offer them. Um, over the last three to four years, uh, one of our core focuses has been within the, the cybersecurity space and we've built a, a cybersecurity stack uh, that helps protect networks and companies from the, the ground up with a uh, zero trust platform basically trust no one, trust nothing uh, except for what you allow. And we've had huge success uh, with, with a you know, multitude of products that we've uh, laid out for our clients. And um, we, we monitor the, the success uh, of, of each one of these products. And um, I'm very happy to be working with CyberShark today on uh, their, their SOC solution that, that we've had for the last four plus years. Um, they have version 2.0. Uh, that's been released the end of 2021, and we've seen a lot of success with this product from the from our administrative end and um, our, our overall client experience. We're identifying identifying things that uh, we, we could not have seen without without this product. So um, very happy to be joined by the founder of CyberShark, Dale Klein. And uh, if you guys have any questions, please feel free on the bottom, click on the Q and A or chat option, and um, We'll circle back at the end and, and uh, answer any questions that you guys have. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Dale. Okay. Thank you, Brian, very much. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, thanks so much for joining us today. My name is Dale Klein. I am the founder of CyberShark. Um, I am a 30-year vet in the uh, cybersecurity industry. I was a former president at McAfee. I have run a, several uh, cybersecurity companies. And back in 2016, we launched CyberShark. Uh, which stands for uh, CyberShark as a security operation as a service. What that means is we provide 24 by 7 monitoring of our customers' environments, and uh, we'll get more into that as we go. Uh, the purpose of today's 
uh, conversation, though, is twofold. Uh, number one, to really discuss what is cybersecurity risk and liability? What's it all about, right? Uh, everyone's worried about getting hit with ransomware, but people really don't really know how to assign costs to this and, and, and what is this really impacting or how it's really impacting the organization. So we want to spend a little bit of time getting some nomenclature down uh, making you aware of what these costs kind of look like and how you can start calculating these costs. And then what we'd like to do is show you how we manage and, and provide the 24 by 7 coverage that bring this that bring the risk and the liability and the costs way, way down. So um, with that, um, uh, Andy, we can move to the next slide. Um, let's just jump into it. So um, cybersecurity incident management is where a tremendous amount of cost exists. So it's not just the fact that organizations get breached and they have to deal with that. It's the fact that there are hundreds of thousands, not millions of security events being generated each day across networks. And so those events, um, if they're not monitored properly, if they're not correlated, if they're not uh, false positives and false negatives aren't removed, um, they create a, a big hassle inside the organization. So incident management is a very difficult job. It's a, uh, a grudgy job, you know, for lack of a better term, uh, but it's something that as an organization, CyberShark does, and, and we love it. We're very good at it. Um, the average overhead cost to organizations for incident management is about 2% of your annual revenue. And, and so we'll talk about that in a little bit more, but the reality is that even a single breach can cost an organization tens if not hundreds of thousands of dollars, a catastrophic breach where data is extracted, where customers are aware they've lost the data, that the data has been lost, where regulatory compliance becomes involved, can run companies millions. And so we do see organizations um, literally going out of business in the mid-sized marketplace um, over a catastrophic data breach. And so the inability of organizations to react in real time to the cyber threats that are increasing daily is where we come in. And so it's really about managing those incidents down, understanding what's going on, understanding when the threat is real and how to stop it. And so to do that, you have to bring together a combination of people, process, and technology. And that's what we do with CyberShark. Let's know. I'm getting there, Dale. Hold on. <laughs> Thanks, Andy. Uh, you, thank you. So a, a little bit of nomenclature. Um, you'll hear lots of things thrown around. I had a cybersecurity incident. I had an event. I had a breach. Um, here's how it builds up. Uh, cybersecurity events are generated by uh, all of your network devices. So every time you log in, you create a security event. You're basically handshaking with the network and saying, my name is Dale, and here's my passwords, my credentials. Please let me in. That creates a security event. Uh, security events happen hundreds of thousands of times a day, even in the smaller of networks. Okay? Um, a security incident, though, occurs when we have a series of events that come together that don't look right. Um, uh, I log in, for instance, at 8 a.m. in New York, and my credentials are okay, and I'm now in the system. And then I log in 15 minutes later from Brazil. That would be two events that don't really match, okay? And so that's the type of correlated event now that creates an incident. And so incidents, depending on the size of the network, there are hundreds of thousands of incidents that occur each month on most networks. And it's the management of these incidents that cause real costs to, to networks. Uh, above and beyond a breach, which, which becomes an extreme situation, but just managing these incidents and trying to figure out what's right, what's wrong, what should I be dealing with, uh, cost organizations a lot of money every day. And then we finally get to a breach. A breach is an incident that has moved all the way to where data now is being extracted, okay? Um, the problem with breaches are they're pretty much non-recoverable. Once the data's gone, it's gone. The data can be stolen and still, you can still have a copy of it on your network or the data can be locked up in malware and, you, and it's non-recoverable. You're not able to even access your own data. And so, Organizations that don't actively monitor for this, and by actively monitoring, we're talking about seven by 24 with a security operations center that's watching for this, their odds of a catastrophic breach approach 100% within a 36 month window. Okay, now most organizations are doing some type of monitoring, but the question is what are they monitoring? How effectively are they monitoring? And how often are they monitoring? And so once you have a breach, now you have a real problem. Um, now you have data that's extracted, uh, if you're a public company, 
your board of directors has to be notified. They have responsibilities that they have to uh, take care of. Compliance organizations come into play. So breaches are a disaster for everybody. And unfortunately, they're happening all the time. Uh, you know, we see we see examples every day in the paper. Um, and our job is really to make sure that those don't happen. Let's go to the next slide. I was just there. <laughs> so let's give a couple of examples of what these mean. And 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 for those of you who are knowledgeable, uh, great, and you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. For those of you who are a little bit new to cybersecurity, some hopefully this will be somewhat helpful. But we we categorize. Uh, basically vectors of attack. Uh, how, is, how is someone trying to hack you or how are they trying to breach your network? And then we talk about really how those bucket up, what, what, what are the types of breaches or the types of incidents uh, that could lead to a breach that we're dealing with. So a moderate breach would be something like a Tor network browser. Tor network browser happens all the time. Um, people set up Tor network browsers because they want to look into the dark web and they often do it at work. And so they're trying to access various things, right? Um, some of it nefarious, some of it's just, you know, being interested in, in trying to find out what's out there. Uh, the problem with the dark web is if you're looking into it, it's looking back at you. And so it becomes an exploit vector for malware. And so things that happen uh, when poor browsers are found on your network, um, oftentimes this is kind of the biggest one, a Bitcoin zombie is installed. A Bitcoin zombie basically takes control of your network processing power to mine Bitcoins, okay? So it can create latency issues on your network. It can create some uh, several problems on your network. It's not necessarily a breach of your network. It's not, it's not data that's being taken away. It's actually someone taking control of your network to utilize it for their own needs, okay? Now, a high severity breach would be something like a system exploit. That's where a credential user or someone who has gained uh, the user's credentials is now attempting to extract unauthorized data. Um, the user ID has been compromised now. Uh, we may have a broad-based password hijack, which means all of your passwords or a good portion of the company's passwords have now been compromised. And, and now we have processes connecting to processes trying to attempt to take and steal data. Okay, so and typically we see this type of activity where people are pulling data and trying to do a transfer drop. They're trying to basically pull data out and put it into um, what's called a, a known bad actor, a bad IP address, you know, somewhere sitting in maybe uh, uh, Ukraine, right? Where, uh, where we're looking at data being extracted out to a country that you don't do business with, your company doesn't do business with, and yet suddenly uh, one or more of your uh, endpoints are trying to transmit data out to it. So that's a high severity issue, right? That, that, that is a critical issue where data is being extracted. It may not be recoverable uh, and needs to be shut down. And then we have a critical one. And that is where we have, uh, again, these are just examples. There's lots of these, um, but a critical one is basically uh, someone has successfully set up a command and control inside your network. Uh, sometimes this can be malware, which drops in and, and opens up what's called a wallet and it starts taking control of your system. Uh, oftentimes, it's someone who has done reconnaissance attacks on your network for several months. Um, you know, we, we dealt with an organization that uh, had uh, had a reconnaissance attack from China for over several, several months. And the net result of that attack was they ended up taking a bunch of diagrams that had to do with a DOD system, and they ended up wiping $127,000 out of the bank account uh, of, that, of that organization at the same time. And so this was a very successful command and control uh, breach that they had. Uh, we were brought in after the fact, by the way, they were not our customer at the time. <laughs> and so uh, at, at this point, you have a non-recoverable breach. The data is gone. You're not going to get it back. Uh, you now have lots of issues involved. And so when we categorize these security incidents, that's fine, Andy. Um, so we just kind of give you an example, kind of a moderate and high severity and critical severity. I'm not gonna read through this slide. You're, you're welcome to have access to these slides after the uh, fact, we can send those out to you. Um, but when we look at moderate, yeah, I'm sorry, Andy, go ahead forward, next one. Yeah. When we talk about costs, we talk about, um, you know, what do these things really run? And so we've been doing this for years and there's lots of information out there. And I, I tend to take the lower dollar amount um, from, the, from the studies. But if you look at something like say a moderate incident, Okay, and it says $50 per incident, but what that really means is it's $50 per hour for every user that's affected. 
Okay. So even a moderate incident, if you say have five employees who have limited access or low bandwidth access uh, to their systems uh, while your team is working to recover it, okay, uh, it basically means it's a recoverable issue. Uh, you probably haven't lost data, but your root cause is probably readily known and you can fix it, but you still have downtime. You still have people sitting around waiting for this to be to be resolved, okay? They can't access their email. They can't access um, their uh, you know, NetSuite or, 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 or cloud-based service. And so moderate incidents, you know, we, we run those about $50 per person per hour. Uh, high severity, again, you know, now we have a critical issue here where organizations are really stumped. They really don't know what the root cause is. They have to run around and try to figure that out. And again, per person, per hour, you're running about $100 per incident. And what you'll find interesting here is that, you know, you'll see this jump. 65% of the incidents that we deal with are moderate. 15% are high severity. 20% are critical, and that's because they weren't caught when they were high severity incidents. And so I, when I say we, I don't mean us as CyberShark, I mean the industry as a whole. And so these high severity incidents then become critical incidents. And so when you look at a critical incident, you know, your organization is unable to provide services. Uh, your commerce server may be down. You may not be able to access a part of your uh, vendor network. Uh, the breach is unrecoverable, data is gone. And so these become critical incidents and it's not just the cost per incident in terms of hours and man hours involved. Then it gets down to what actually happens at the end of that incident and what does it really run you in terms of downtime. And so security incidents, security cost by instance, these are things that as an organization, when you're looking at security budgeting, when you're looking at how do I really want to map out and defend my intellectual property going forward, this is cost that you need to understand. Next slide, Amy. And then we have the big one, <laughs> okay? So catastrophic loss of data is typically running organizations about $3.8 million. This is across the board. Um, so it's a number that hits large and, and, and small size organizations. There is a statistic out there. You can look at the Verizon breach report. Um, unfortunately, it's a statistic that hasn't changed in many years, which is uh, uh, a, a significant number of small, mid-sized businesses, businesses with up to 100 employees, go out of business within 18 months of a catastrophic breach. Um, so the catastrophic breach for you know, someone like AT&T that runs them $4 million is something that they can handle. A catastrophic breach for, uh, say, a series of nursing homes at $3.8 million is something that may just take them out of business. So catastrophic is, you know, the one that you really need to avoid and really what we stay awake with and, and, and work with our customers on every day to make sure that this does not happen. Next slide, Amy. So let's talk about the cost again, right? Let's just stay fixed on this a little bit. So you have fixed costs in security. Um, you have to staff, you have to hire people, you have to make sure that whether it's an IT person or, or a certified security professional, they have to be hired, they have to be trained. And unfortunately for certified security professionals, there's a very high turnover. We have a 2.4 million person gap in certified cybersecurity professionals in the United States today. That is a very difficult gap to close anytime soon. And that gap has not closed in the last eight years. That number has remained pretty consistent over the last eight years in terms of having you know, certified security professionals available. Once you do have people on board, you have to train them. You have to get them certified. You have your security infrastructure and the CapEx around that. And of course, you have all your governance and compliance adherence that you have to provide to your auditors every year. That's great. If that was all that you had to do for security, you could put a put a stake in the ground and say our security program is going to run us X number of dollars this year. The problem is when incidents happen and breaches happen, then the variable costs come in. How much productivity do I, did I lose? How much downtime did I have? Did I lose my commerce server? Did I lose my vendor server? What did that cost me? Okay. Root cause remediation. How much time do I have to spend? going through and figuring out what happened and working it backwards. And this can take months in, in cases. This can take months to figure out how much time or what actually happened because people weren't monitoring them, right? They have to go back and dig through log files. They have to go back and uh, try to assess what happened at what time frame. 
Okay. Then you have the loss of data from the breach. What did that cost you in terms of dollars? Brand damage. Uh, depending on who you are and what you do, if you're a financial service firm and you get breached uh, and you have to notify your customers that you were breached and lost their data, um, that could have a devastating impact to your brand. It could have a devastating impact to your customer base. And then finally, there's legal exposure and defense costs. Uh, being perfectly honest, not very many companies get sued for data loss, but they do have to settle and they have to figure out what they're going to pay their customers for the loss and the damage that occurred. So those variable costs add up. And again, it's things that organizations have find very hard to take into account as they look at a complete cybersecurity policy and a cybersecurity protection for their organization. Next slide. So how do we do this? How do you mitigate all that risk and liability? Well, as we said at the beginning, it's really three things. You have to have the right people in place who are certified and know what they're doing. You have to have the right processes in place. You have to have a playbook for what happens. When, when something bad happens, how do, we, how do we track it down? How do we stop it? How do we remediate it? And you have to have the right technology in place. And the technology is, you know, there's lots and lots of technology out there. There is no silver bullet though in technology. It is a combination of all the technologies out there that have to work together. You have to be able to capture your data, your, your, your security events by logging. You have to have antivirus sitting at the endpoints. You have to have malware protection sitting at the endpoints. You have to have a SIM, a security information event management correlation engine that can sort through these millions of, of, of events every day and find that needle in the haystack. You also have that endpoint protection. You have to have endpoint detect and response sitting out there so that we can understand what the users are doing, what the user behavior looks like, and more importantly, when users have been exposed to malware or ransomware. So, you know, the one thing I always tell people is, look, no technology anywhere that's been developed so far has ever worked without human monitoring. It just doesn't happen, okay? So you have to have all three of these things together. And so technology is not a silver bullet on its own. Without the people in the process, it's really um, just technology. And if no one's watching it, you'll, you will get hit. So um, next slide, Andy. So what's CyberShark? So CyberShark is SOC as a service, Security Operations Center as a service. And what we do is we bring together the people, the technology, and the process to make sure that you're safe seven by 24. And you're gonna see that in two minutes here. So it's 100% cloud delivery. We include endpoint detect and respond uh, in the product. So you, your, your, your endpoints are protected. You'll gather that user information, the flow data, uh, that EDR will coexist with other EDR you may have already deployed. It sets up in hours. Uh, uh, Smith is the head of our customer success team. They will work with uh, uh, Brian and his team, and they'll make sure that you get set up and up and running in hours and be secure seven by 24. And there's no maintenance or patching. The system it will patch itself on the fly as updates are made available. They get pushed out automatically. So what's going on inside the technology? Well, there's high speed logging, search and retrieval. There is uh, the EDR, as you mentioned, there is uh, 100 million state checks per second <laughs> that, are, that is going on. And there's also artificial intelligence. And so we are taking all of the security feed from your system, whether it's coming from your antivirus provider, whether it's coming from your uh, scan provider, whether it's coming from your EDR provider, uh, uh, we are, are um, sorry, intelligence, threat intelligence feeds. We take all of that in and we correlate that against what we are seeing happen inside your actual environment. And we have a team staff seven by 24 that's, that is running the technology, is watching the technology for those alerts, and then running the playbook about what has to happen when we see these types of events. Next slide, Andy. And so you guys are going to see this in a minute, so I'm going to spend much time on this slide except to say that, you know, this is a real-time system. Uh, it will capture the data in real time. You will have a view of your data. Uh, uh, Brian's uh, organization also has a view of the data and will be watching it as well. And we are watching seven by 24. We're CyberShark, we never sleep. That's what we do. And so you're gonna see this in two minutes. So I won't even get too far into this except to say uh, what you're about to watch. What you're gonna see is a platform that's multi-tenant. So if you have multiple locations, uh, we can monitor those locations uh, individually, but bring them into a single pane of glass. Uh, you're going to see uh, EDR, endpoint detect and respond that has been deployed, that comes with our service. 
And that is going to allow things like automated responses at 3 a.m. So when we see that malware set up in the morning, you know, at, at 3 a.m. at night, we can automatically quarantine it and wait and wait for the morning before we have to do something with it. Um, you're going to see uh, basically security posture and reporting that you can look at at any time and understand. Am I getting better? Am I getting worse? If I'm getting better, great. If I'm getting worse, what can we do to fix that? Okay. So there's a lot that you're going to see here in the, in the next few minutes. And so I'm going to wrap it at this point. There might be one more slide, Andy, I think. No, go back. You know, I'm going to wrap at this point. I'm going to turn the demonstration over to Andy and Smith uh, because uh, you know, uh, the visual is worth a thousand words, right? So with that, unless there's any, well, I think there's probably chat questions going on, but uh, Andy, if you want to go ahead and take over, I appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Dale. Uh, let's see. Oh, I can't get on. So um, as Dale mentioned, this is the, uh, the uh, performance dashboard uh, that is basically where people love. They love this view. Um, SOC as a service uh, has, um, was all about security. Um, but, and we've been doing it since about 2016, CyberShark has been available, SOC as a service, uh, right? The 24 by seven people process and technology. Um, what we've added in 2.0, which I really love, is not only are we able to provide that security posture that Dale's been talking about, but also uh, operational information. Um, who's doing what, where, where they're going, uh, how much bandwidth is being used, as well as user behavior analytics. Uh, so uh, we've expanded that uh, to include all those things to give, uh, you know, you as our, our customer that, that value add that, and that insight into everyday operations that you might not have had before. Uh, so within this performance dashboard, what we're looking at is really, you know, total events analyzed, uh, how many threat indicators uh, out, out of that 167 million events are there. And then finally, and because of the technology doing all that correlation, because we're running against 70 plus different threat intelligence feeds, because our SOC team is analyzing those 2 million uh, threat indicators, 14 alerts were sent out. So right now, no one's going to go through 2,000 threat indicators, but 14 tickets um, and alerts are. are completely manageable during the course of the day, or in this case, seven days. Uh, so in addition to that quick um, you know, security posture, we're able also to provide you applications monitor, private host monitor, external hosts detected, uh, threat indicators by origin. This happened you know, at a machine level, application level, network host, um, malicious host by flow count. Um, and then we get into more operational stuff below that, where we're talking about bandwidth usage and uh, upload bandwidth and, and all this wonderful stuff, total bytes, um, top talkers to the internet and the sites they're accessing. So again, not only security, which is huge, but also that operational and user behaviors um, that allows to give more insight to that day-to-day hourly, uh, you know, sh uh, posture. Um, now from here, you can easily click down into open alerts. And this is where we're going to go more into the security aspect. Uh, so these 14 alerts, um, these are the, uh, the bad things that happened that created an alert or what we call a ticket. Um, and these tickets can be uh, really delivered to uh, BNL, PC Solutions. And uh, we work together to get that remediation piece done. Uh, but uh, these alerts are for seven days. This is a portal you can come into and click on it. You can easily change the time frame from 15 minutes to 90, the last 90 days. Um, but to give you additional information, as, as Smith, he went into the last 15 days. So now we're seeing 67 alerts. So uh, the previous eight days was pretty busy. But uh, to get additional information about these alerts, we can just simply click on uh, the uh, box that says critical or major, and I'll let uh, Smith pick and choose which one he wants to go into.
The second, I uh, will pick the one that uh, I looked at before, so it has a okay. little more information. Yeah. Uh, okay. now, and guys, I, I apologize for yeah. jumping. Yeah, here it is. This is, I was this is Dale. I, I, just want to, I just want to point out one thing to all of our attendees. Um, we're showing you behind the curtain, <laughs> okay? Yes. So, so we're going to be showing you a lot of what our SOC team does. You won't have to be doing any of this. <laughs> so, yes. Yeah. Uh, but we just want to show you the power <laughs> platform um and so you know, almost all of this is being done and, man and managed by uh, our 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 wonderful uh, 7 by 24 team or 24 by 7 team that is uh, globally based so um uh, sorry andy no no worries as dale said this is this is a sandbox environment this is a demo environment um and this is really where our SOC team lives um this just you can have access to it you don't have to access to it um it's your preference but um for our purposes, because this is a, te uh, a test environment, we've actually executed this malware infection and let it run its course. And, and what this does, and, and we'll show you in probably event trending in history, is kind of what happens, um, the, the whole lifespan of, 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 of an alert, of a virus, of a malware infection. So um, as with this information, we kind of have we opened up the ticket, so now we see the threat indicator types. So these are the things that trigger, okay, this, this evasion, that's, that's not normal. Um, it happened five, you know, 5,561 times, and then we're giving you the, the timestamp on that. So on the 11th at 1131 AM, you know, this evasion ha instance happened 5,500 times. Um, from there, we can see that now that invasion has created a whole new threat indicator, um, was it uh, 17 minutes later, uh, where now we have a, a connection by a process. And then from there, we get connections on a port by a process. And then, you know, a few, you know, later that day at 11 o'clock, like 12 hours, now we see a Windows exploit. And then from there, it goes into account re recon then again, a new process, and then nothing for two days. And then all of a sudden, we have uh, 1,100 uh, instances of a virus. Um, so what we're showing you is kind of the life, uh, the life, um, oh, it? life cycle of, a, of this particular virus. And this is really goes to what Dale was talking about as far as, you know, why does it take so long? What you know um, for these things to be seen? It was six months, but um, as Dale said, if that invasion doesn't go checked, eventually you're going to get those viruses. And where we're going to go, where we're going to intervene, is really going to be probably right around there. Uh, you know that new connection on a horse or the Windows exploit um, prior to that virus hitting for sure. Uh, so to get additional information, so this is kind of a um, a summary of this particular, but now we're going to get more information. We're going to double click on the on that particular threat. We're going to double click on the message, and now we're getting in, a ton of information. Again, this is where our SOC is playing, but we're going to get the raw message log. We're going to give you the IP addresses, uh, those that are affected, the source IP addresses, um, any applications that were being used. Um, so we're just given a ton of information. Um, it's available in the portal at the touch of a button, um, which is just, it's huge. But again, providing this information, again, at the click of a button in real time um, as our SOC uh, develops that. Uh, some things I wanted, uh, I would like to, if you could just scroll up a little bit there, um, is kind of some of the uh, things, and we can go into event trending in history. Right from there. So this will give us uh, the event trending in history is going to give us a uh, graphical view of the uh, the life cycle of this particular virus. Um, and we can see on the first day on 111, we see that 445 evasions, no viruses, and then we see what a, a big improvement is severity and confidence level of this particular threat being an actual. Um, uh, problem for us. So we can see on the first day it was at 35%. Now we're seeing, well, now we get a little bit more activity around that where now it's 55% confidence and severity. And as, it, as we keep going through the process, that confidence and severity level goes up. And you can see that nothing's happening yet, 
there's things definitely bad that are in your environment, but at this point, uh, the payload has not been delivered. And that's really important to have that 24 by seven eyes on the data uh, and not just depend on you know, the technology to do it. And then as we move for forward, more uh, you know, account reconnaissance, you can see it. And now on the second day, we have that two instances of the virus um, and now we have a 75% confidence level and severity. And this is really, you know, um, depending on your business policies, we can create that automatic uh, remediation or quarantine of the hosts, which uh, Smith will get into in the next uh, 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 tab here. Uh, but you can kind of see that whole uh, life, life cycle of that particular virus. Now the alert actions, um, this is where it becomes a manual process or semi-automatic. And I will turn it off, to, I would turn it over to Smith to kind of go through how the remediation by the SOC is done on the back end. Thank you, thank you, Andy. So as we are going through this event trending in history, uh, what Andy was talking about, I'm just going to briefly recap this. This is the place, the, the 11th of uh, January is when we see that the something is, uh, uh, something is uh, going on and uh, uh, we are monitoring that. And as you go to the next day, you see that the, uh, there is no virus here yet, but I see account recon happening. And because the account recon is happening, I know that something more bad is going to happen. We want to take control over it right at this juncture. Okay, we don't want to have it go to the next day, which is when it becomes uh, uh, viruses coming in and the severe in confidence gets really, really high. So we want to take care of that here. And as you go down here, it tells you that there is a minor that became major. We'll take care of it here so that it does not get to the critical level. We'll still be monitoring it. In this environment, we'll let it run as Andy was talking about. How do you take care of it? It's very simple. You go into alert action. You can go through the manual steps like normally people will go through, but the SOC team has a lot more efficient tools at their hand. So they'll go in and do remediation here, and they'll say, okay, I'm going to click on this and say update, and it's going to say that the I know what particular process that is a bad actor, that is a malicious process. I'm going to kill that process. I'm going to make sure that the file that started that process, that file is removed as well, which is what the quarantining of the file is. And I'm going to make sure that the host is separated out or quarantined as well. All of that is going to happen at the click of a button. Nobody needs to do anything other than just go down here and click on the update as a button here. Okay. And you just click on update and it's all done. Okay. And you would do it on the very next day so that the viruses don't come into an environment uh, at all. Okay. This is very, very powerful. Um, nobody needs to do anything other than clicking on that. This is still somewhat manual, even though it's highly automated. We have a store capability, which is what we are going to show here, where all that stuff can happen much, much faster and much, much rapidly. And it can happen while the SOC team may be thinly staffed or whatever may be happening. So we all know about ransomware quite a bit. So let's see if there is a ransomware here. Let's click on this uh, ransomware here and say, I want to edit this configuration. So how is it going to take care of this particular configuration? You would see that it says that if it's a ransomware, if it's critical, with a confidence score over 70, I have the auto remediation enabled. So I don't even have to click anywhere. Uh, it gets done on the weekend, Friday through Monday, when the staffing level is thin, as I was saying earlier. And it gets done on this set of assets that you have. I can pick and choose which assets I, want, I, I think are of high value to me. I might think that the authentication systems are important, data center service are important, database servers are important, email servers are important, the guest networks may not be that important, hard disk systems, IBM DB2 servers, and so on. You can keep clicking on the ones that are really meaningful to you, and only those ones will be uh, remediated. Uh, the inf furthermore, uh, it will also remediate that on multiple locations. It can do it on the EDR, as we were seeing earlier, it can do, in a, do it in a Azure or AWS infrastructure, if you have a hybrid environment with cloud infrastructure or just cloud infrastructure, uh, or it can do it on the multiple firewalls if you have a different geographic locations where each location has a firewall. It can be done in any and all of those locations. 
without uh, a soft person doing anything at all. This is really, really powerful. Just click, 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 and you're done with it, okay? Uh, now, sometimes people want to have their own policies implemented on top of that. So to support that, we have something which we call as a playbook manager. When we go into playbook manager, uh, you can go in and say, show me the list of all the playbooks that are there. Okay, as the playbooks are going to show up, you will, we will go through the similar type of setup that we have for the uh, 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 ransomware as well. Okay, so, uh, so let's see if it, uh, once it shows up, we will go through that. Uh, hello. Okay, yeah, here it is. Uh, so let's, let's look through this. So if you look at the, I want to remediate on the ransomware, I can go in here and say, edit this, okay? And as you'll see here, this is a drag and drop type of a process that we have, uh, where it says that immediately you take care of things, right? And you can set it up so that it can do it on a, uh, a specific schedule, if you like. Pick up all the ransomware alerts. If it's a uh, critical, then I'm gonna quarantine the host here, okay? If it is a, uh, a major, I can say block the external communication. If otherwise, I'm going to keep an eye on it and I'm going to notify the SOC team. So you can see that this is very, very flexible. Let's say that I wanted to add some of my own process, like I want to get an approval, then I would send the, send the email out to uh, get that approved. Uh, or I can say I want to add an audit comment. I can go and do that just to drag and drop right here. And as you can see, it can automatically connect these things together. Then I can go in here and say, okay, this is my audit comment. added here, and I will say that the uh, the comment could be that the, this ransomware has been remediated uh, uh, through uh, uh, playbooks uh, by uh, quarantining the workstation. Okay, I can put this in, I can add metadata in this if I wanted to, and if I say done here, you can see that the, it, it added that. I can reorganize them however I want to do that. I can document them, whatever I wanted to do here, okay? So it's very, very powerful. Uh, again, this is all done behind the scene by the SOC uh, uh, team, okay? We also have lots and lots of reports available. There's security report, compliance reports, operation reports, investigation reports, and many of them are very, very powerful from the stakeholder perspective, as well as understanding how the security posture looks. So let's say here that the, I wanted to get a security posture looked at for my system, uh, and I want to do it for, let's say, starting from the 2nd of January till now, right? So if I click on this, it's going to create the report, uh, which is always live. You don't have to do anything by getting the data out and try to create report on your own. It is all built into the system, uh, which is really, really good from the, uh, 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 information that you can provide to the uh, uh, stakeholders in your organization. Uh, either yeah. uh, uh, we can provide it or you can create it on your own. Uh, yeah, uh, let me, I know they, uh, uh, Dale and uh, the team yeah. loves this. So Dale, if you want to add something to it, uh, please go ahead. Yeah, so um, so uh, again, I do want to stress, we are, we are really uh, showing you what's happening behind the curtains here. So everything Schmidt just showed you about how to develop the policies um, for automatic quarantine, for instance, that's something that Schmidt's team will do for you, okay? That is a conversation with uh, your IT team and the customer team, but they, they will handle and manage all that for you. Um, the screen that, uh, the, the opening screen that Andy started with, that's kind of where you live and breathe uh, as a customer. Uh, that's where you're going to want to get your daily snapshot and just see what's going on. This screen, however, though, is where, um, and, and I don't know everyone's titles here, but, uh, you know, this is where the people who are responsible for uh, reporting into the uh, senior management level, this is where they live and breathe, right? This is where you can come in and pull reports and, and basically have a snapshot every day. How are we doing? How have we done over the last 30 days? What, what incidents happened that were of critical issues that, you know, were hopefully automatically stopped because we had the EDR deployed, uh, but yet, you know, uh, we're, we're of some concern that we need to be looking at. Uh, where's, what's going on with our users? 
right? What, how are user-based analytics? You know, do we have people that are out there just surfing the web all day, you know, playing on Amazon, or do we have people that are, you know, working with our partners and our value chain and, 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 and who are those members and what's going on there? Um, so this is a security posture report that in the past, um, uh, for, for our previous version of this platform, so you're looking at 2.0, which we just released, yeah, for, a, for our previous uh, version of this platform, this was a very difficult report to pull together. Um, uh, uh, sorry, something popped up there. Uh, this is a very difficult report for us to uh, pull together, and now it's completely embedded in the product. So uh, we'll talk in a few minutes about how you can see the value of the product through a proof of concept for 30 days and how this report will automatically be generated for you day one and we'll start and we'll start populating so this is this is a fantastic um, way to go there's also the compliance reports here um, and uh, you know all, all, all the most popular ones you can pull those down or we can have those scheduled to be sent to you um, you know there there is a tremendous amount in the product but our job if we're doing it right is to make sure that we're doing that for you, that if uh, that, you know, that you're really focused on kind of just understanding what's happening, that you're getting the remediation tickets as needed, and that with the EDR deployed, and I want to be very um, clear about this. Uh, I believe at this point, we are the only SOX as a service that includes EDR uh, in the price. And so uh, this is a, a huge value because it does keep you from, <laughs> you know, waiting for that three o'clock phone call, you know, that the servers went down because we have malware infection and things are going crazy, right? Um, you know, with, with our EDR in place, and again, that EDR coexists. So if you're running Sentinel-1 or McAfee or Pick Your Poison, you know, we coexist completely with those EDRs. We'll take their feeds, but we will round trip the issue back to be able to do the quarantine, the automatic remediation for you um, right there and then. So um, so I think, Smith, this is probably a good point to kick this back over and to Andy, and let's uh, wrap this up and move towards questions and uh, we'll see what else anyone wants to see. Thanks, Dale. <laughs> so as Dale had mentioned, we do offer a free 30-day assessment, no obligation. Uh, we spin it up. Um, again, we work with BNL. Uh, to get that done, uh, get it up, get it running, uh, show you, uh, you'll have access to the portal, you can see those reports. And again, uh, we can provide that report back to you, that, that security posture. Um, Dale had mentioned, you can not only do them ad hoc in the portal, but we can have those scheduled as well. Um, so we're going to go over a lot of things, uh, you know, all the different things that we've saw during that particular uh, period of time. So it is available to you. Um, it's, it's painless for you. Um, it's something that uh, the partners, uh, BNL and, and our customer success team work on um, behind the scenes. And, uh, you know, uh, and that also helps around the pricing. Um, uh, let's see what else we have here. Um, so the, the, the health assessment report, they all, we kind of went into that security assessment. This is what it looks like when it's printed out in a PDF file. Uh, so it's available to you again at the click of a button or something we can easily, uh, um, you know, uh, schedule to have delivered. Right. So, so, you know, um, we really, really value our partnership with Dean and Brian and his team. Um, they've been uh, fantastic partners for us and they really understand this environment. And so when we sat down and talked about doing this webinar, we wanted to make sure that, you know, that we were providing the most value we can in terms of, you know, being else customers. And hopefully, you know, to recap, um, we hope that you walk away with a little bit of understanding more about what security incident management actually costs you, okay? Um, you know, 2%, you know, for a company that might be making margins of 12 or 15%, that's, that's a lot of money to be spending against security. And through seven by 24 monitoring, and I think when you see, you know, when, if we get to the point where, where you're talking pricing with Brian, you'll see that this is very, very economically priced, um, that, you know, that becomes found money for you and for your bottom line. And so, uh, so hopefully you walked away with an understanding of, of, of 
what the true cost of incident management is, what it really looks like inside your organization, how between BNL and, and Cybershark, we can manage that cost down for you on a seven by 24 basis, uh, how we can do that through uh, not just the seven by 24 monitoring, but by the automated remediation that we can provide through the EDR. Uh, and the fact that at the end of the day, you know, if we catch issues before they become major problems, which is what our job is, is to manage those incidents down to make sure nothing big happens and nothing becomes a big problem. Um, you know, that money that you've been sent, spending on, on uh, incident management, whether you were aware of it or not, uh, you know, drops to your bottom line. And so, you know, that's where we hope you're, you're at today. Um, I would urge you, uh, please take advantage of the, of the 30 day POC. Uh, it's free. Uh, worst case, you're going to find out a lot more about what your security posture actually looks like. It's very, very simple to spin up. It is not something that will take, you know, three weeks of change management to get turned on. It takes a couple of hours to turn it on and spin it up. Um, Smith and the customer success team will work directly with you uh, and, and with Brian's team to make sure that it's a, a smooth and painless uh, uh, spin up for you. But at the end of 30 days, you're going to know so much more about your information security footprint, your security posture, the attack vectors that are really coming at you. And you're going to have a bunch of compliance report capability that, uh, you know, that you really can't pull from one single um, data source in terms of security information uh, software. But with a SOC and with a SIM, uh, you can get one comprehensive report out. And so we hope you take advantage of, the, of, of, of this offer. Yeah, and Dale, I, I, do want to say, I do want to say that, that um, what we're seeing uh, from, from our, our, our client base is um, with, with, as their cyber insurance um, expires and these renewals are coming up, um, it's not how it was two, three, four years ago. Uh, now they're asking, the, the, um, the carriers are asking the, the questions, do you have a managed GDR? Do you have a SIM? Do you have a SOC solution? And um, a, a, lot of, a lot of our clients, a lot of our prospects, simply they, they don't have that. They don't have that in, in place. So we're able to now take this technology uh, at a fraction of the price of, of what it would cost independently to get these services and roll, roll, roll it out there in, in, in under a day and push it out to our clients. And, and we're checking all these, these boxes. Otherwise, these, these insurance companies, they're denying coverage if you don't have some of this stuff in place. So um, it's, it's great to, to have that, that bundle along with the EDR and um, we're, we're having great success with it at, at, at our clients. So just wanted to put that out there too. Yep. Thanks, Brian. Um, yeah, this is Andy. It looks like we have about five minutes and I, I urge you, if you have any questions, use the Q&A or the chat feature with it. Um, so, you know, we'll, we're going to hang on a little bit longer and uh, please feel free to ask any questions you might have. Or <laughs> you got an email and phone number. <laughs> Uh, for us. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll throw out one last thing. Uh, anybody who, who wants to do a POC uh, through BNL, uh, we will give you one of these very cool CyberShark shirts. <laughs> They're a rare commodity. <laughs> we don't do them a lot. <laughs> but, but for anyone who does a POC, we will, we will toss it. Those, those are print. Those are printed to order, guys. These are that's how custom that is. Yeah, yeah that's right. They're very <laughs> customized. They're very, very high demand <laughs> item. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I'm not seeing anything coming, guys. Um, I get you know. Feel free to you know reach out to to us at BNL. Just the the address is up there on the screen. Give us a phone call. Uh, there's there's some white papers uh, for CyberShark on there as well. Um, and, uh, you know, look forward to, uh, you know, if anyone needs a hand with this or wants some more information, uh, we're here for you. It looks like I do have one question. Um, there was a mention of 24 by seven live support earlier. Can you elaborate on the service? Um, and, um, I'll, I'll take a stab at this and Dale and Brian, if you want to add to it. Um, mm -hmm. so, uh, basically what we're talking about 24 by seven is our SOC team is monitoring your network and all of our clients network on a 24 by seven, 365. We don't take off. That's what we do. Uh, we follow the sun. So, um, 
So at, that's what we're talking about, live support. Um, should the need arise on a remediation or piece, really that's where BNL and CyberShark work really great together to get that remediation piece done. Um, I will let Brian uh, discuss how they kind of remediate on, from themselves to the end uh, to, to you as the client. Yeah, so, so as a partner uh, with CyberShark, um, as Andy said earlier, we have access to the portal. Uh, we have a single pane of glass. We see all of our, all of our tenants, our clients underneath that, that single pane of glass. If any critical tickets come in, uh, we're alerted of them real time, um, our whole team over here. And um, if it's critical, we have it going to, um, and again, if we have clients that have after hours support, that would be addressed uh, after hours, you know, uh, in, in real time as well. Um, and just to give you a perspective, some of the, some of the, the chatter that we've seen uh, you know, I don't want to call them false positives, but it's, it's data exfiltration. A lot of our clients now are doing a ton of Zooms, right? So what, what CyberShark saw was this host, this workstation, this computer, this user is pushing out a lot of data off the network, which, you know what, I want to know about that. The client needs to know about that. But, but you know, you dig a little deeper into it and it's what oh, it happens to be a Zoom meeting that's actually broadcasting video. So we kind of whitelist that application uh, for that client. But stuff like that is, is, you know, that you wouldn't see anywhere else. Nothing else would pick that up. Uh, so that would come in as a critical alert because that's considered, you know, data exfiltration is kind of high on our list. We want to protect against that. Um, but but all of our most of our clients, um, they're they're eight by five with some weekend support. You would hear from us real time as soon as those alerts come in. You can be copied on critical alerts. Uh, there's 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 a some flexibility there with how we handle it. Right, and 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 on top of that, um, again, um, you know, CyberShark includes uh, EDR, and so. Uh, one of the first things that will happen is when you set up your CyberSark implementation is uh, once we have data feeds flowing, then we will want to deploy the EDR. And so the EDR is really, it's, 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 it's a tripwire, right? It's, it's, it's a safety mechanism that says, hey, if something bad is happening, if we see malware coming in, we're starting seeing processes connect to other processes, um, shut it down and shut it down at least until 9 a.m. <laughs> when, the, when, the, when the crew shows up and they can take a look at it and decide whether or not that's what they wanted to happen. Um, it, ten, nine times out of 10, it's not what they wanted to happen. So, um, so seven by 24 or 24 by seven, I should say, um, is, is exactly that. We follow the sun, we have uh, socks here and, and overseas. Uh, so tickets are handed off if there are issues that we don't understand. Um, we have a team of analysts that are working those tickets um, around the clock uh, to make sure that we understand what happened, what went wrong, and to tell you exactly how to remediate that problem. And we work with uh, uh, BNL to do that, uh, uh, but uh, but we 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 never sleep. We are we are we are there seven by twenty four. And with that, I, I just want to thank everybody, and um, you know, you contact us if you need any more information, and. Uh... Thanks again for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you, Thanks. everyone. Thanks, guys. Hope you have a great day. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Yeah.